Hey guys, Lumi Juliet checking in. Today I just want to make a quick video going over some of the details of this uh, Ender 5 style cooling head installation on an Ender 3 V2. So the first thing, and I think this is unique to me, um, but I did not choose to remove the X carriage. Um, traditionally you can do that just by loosening the eccentric nut on this bottom bolt here, um, this bottom idler. But I couldn't do that uh, because I have a clack ender bed leveling sensor, and that adds a little bit of height if it will focus right there. And I think that prevents me from taking this off just by loosening this eccentric nut. So what I've done instead is removed this top right idler wheel, um, this top right roller. And now I'm going to start by putting this part in the back. It fits in like this and this little rectangular piece will fit through that rectangular hole in that plate. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that it is completely flush, that this surface here is completely flush against the back surface of this plate. Um, for me, I had to sand a little bit off the bottom, and I think that is because of this, uh, the extra height from that clack under there. So I'm going to do that. So one thing that you want to check before beginning is that this hole here on this back plate part um, will accept whatever screw you plan to use. So this hole for me printed a little bit small. Um, some people's printers may print the hole bigger. This printer has a tendency to make holes pretty small. So I need to drill this out just a little bit so that I can put this machine screw in there. This is not best practice. If I had the time or inclination, I would go find a self-tapping screw, but I don't care that much and this shouldn't come off all that much. So this hole here, I will drill out until I can shove this screw in there and cut some threads with it. Okay, so that's in. Um, it, as you can, maybe you can see, it is completely flush against that plate. It doesn't want to focus. There we go. So it's completely flush against that back plate there. And there's that rectangular piece from the back sticking out through the front. The next thing to put on is the fan duct part, which I've already screwed this front part to it. It doesn't matter. Um, but this is the next step. It's going to go on like this. And you notice the hot end has been removed because these holes, these two holes at the top here, go on these posts, which is what the hot end bolts onto with, with these two holes at the top. So you do have to remove the hot end to put this on. All right, so I've attached this fan shroud. Uh, this has got to get pushed all the way against this back plate. And these holes, these two holes here, I had to drill out just a tiny bit so that they would slide over these posts. It kind of press fits against this rectangular protrusion on this back piece. And then there's also, I put in a screw here. This is a machine thread screw, so I had I was careful not to over tighten. And then I've also soldered together my um, two new blower fans, just in parallel. In my case, blue was ground and yellow was 24 volts, but you should double check because it is reality. So the next step for me, since I had to remove this roller, is to reinstall the roller and I'm going to do that before I put the print head back on because if I put this on it blocks my access to that hole there. So I'm going to put the roller on and then I'm going to put the print head on and then just mount all the fans and we should be done. All right so the next thing I'm going to harvest the two tiny self-tapping screws from this guy. So these two right here. This is the original blower fan. Um, and a little plastic shroud. We don't need the shroud, but we'll take these two self-tapping screws and I'll put these in here um, to hold these two side blowers in place. Um, this is the wiring for those just in parallel and I'll take all this excess and bundle it up and zip tie it. All right, here's the final part I'll put together. Um, this is just extra length wire from these two part cooling fans. Uh, googly eyes are optional, of course, but add a lot of personality. My only concern at this point is that some of this extra length of wire is touching something hot in the hot end. 
Uh, it does seem to be touching the top of the heat break, but I don't think you can see down in there. Yeah, I think this wire is touching the top of the heat break, but I'm not too concerned since that part of the heat break doesn't get hot. Uh, it's the bottom of the heat break that I'm more worried about. But it works. The, both blower fans work, and that is something that you should probably test before you finish putting it together. Because realizing that they don't work at this point would be unfortunate. Um, but that's all. Hopefully this helps if you're looking at building one of these or in the process of building one of these. And good luck.